Bob. Uh, in the family, if I'm in trouble, it's Robert, so you can call me Robert or Bob. Uh, welcome to this conference. And I'm not sure why I'm here, except that <coughs> Kiara asked me if I would do the introduction, and then she said, would I give a paper, and then would I chair the whole session for this morning? So I said yes. And then I looked at the timetable, and I see we've got half an hour for welcomes. And then I realized Kiara's Italian. And there are two types of time zones. There's English time zone and Italian time zone. If ever you've been to a conference in Italy, you know that you will always be late. But this isn't Italy, so we might even be early. Um, I was just saying to Chiara, I went to a conference in Rome about four years ago, not surprisingly on aerial archaeology, and by coffee break we were already an hour and a half late. It was a really good conference. Now, so why are we here? Um, in a sense, it's for you, and also it's for the next generation. Um, I was trying to find a piece, an object that would, would perhaps sum it up, and then I realized I have not just one, but many iPods, but this iPod is now obsolete. And some of you younger ones are like, oh, that looks an old one. And it's only six years old. It's an infant, but it's obsolete. The pace of change is phenomenal. And to an old person like me, my kids bought me this when I was 15. Not like it was my age went, sorry. Um, <laughs> And the battery might explode at any moment, but I'm loath to give it up because I love it and it still works. But I could get it changed for a new little one that will probably have 20 gigabytes on it. Uh, it's got some very old music on it as well. So, in a sense, the reason this, this conference is very important is because it is about the future. And actually doing things in a digital way, which you all understand far better than an old person like me, but also important for the funders in my day job in terms of Heritage Lottery Fund, which we'll hear about in a minute, the policy change. But the other thing is actually making it relevant, because anybody can tweet. And the whole point of, and I don't know how many people in the audience actually have Twitter accounts. You see nearly all of you, and you're not following me yet. Um, <laughs> Yeah, might be after this. You don't want to. I'm, I asked somebody the other day whether they were a tweeter, and they said, oh, I'm a lurking tweeter, which sounds a little bit like an insult. But there are projects, and I'm just going to mention one now. Um, as some of you know, I'm, I, I quite like things that, to do with aeroplanes and aviation. And the Heritage Lottery Fund, about six years ago, funded XH558, which the geeks amongst you will know is the Vulcan. Now, the Vulcan has 23,594 followers. And when they're short of a bit of cash, they, they do through all the various social media, but including Twitter, they say, can you all give me a tag? So they can raise a lot of money very quickly. Because to the most of the people who are on here, 10 pounds is not a lot of money. So they can raise 200,000 pounds very, very quickly. So that, to me, is the way in which we should be thinking of how we might use social media in terms of making archaeology available and accessible to everybody else. So that's why we're here. I'm now going to hand over to Chiara, who's going to tell you some more about what we're here. Good morning, and thank you very much uh, to Bob. Um, first of all, I would like to join Bob in welcoming you to uh, today's conference on digital engagement in archaeology strategies um, and evaluation methods. Um, and um, after Bob's introduction, I would just like to say um, a few very quick words um, on the conference background. Um, so um, something that might help to put this event into context. And then I'll very quickly uh, leave the floor to Dan, who will be speaking uh, in private detail about the conference structure and about the program that we would like to propose to you for these two days. So, um, uh, where does the idea uh, of, the com of the conference uh, come from, um, and how was it developed, and what we hope to achieve uh, in the next few days? Um, well, as you uh, might have seen and uh, read in your conference booklets, uh, the conference is organized under the auspices of two uh, UCL creatures, um, if you like. One is Casper. Um, the Centre for Audiovisual Study and Practice in Archaeology, uh, directed by Don Henson, who will be uh, there, uh, chairing the final discussion. Um, and the other is the um, Archaeology and Communication Research Network, uh, which was set up just a few months after CASPER in 2010, 
uh, and under uh, the, the Casper umbrella uh, to conduct a very specific program of activities aiming to gradually explore the topic of digital engagement in archaeology from a very much um, user uh, point of view, so looking at user experiences um, in detail. And um, so through these activities that we have been conducted, um, we aimed to uh, examine how archaeologists working in different areas of the sector, so from museums and sites uh, to um, the com commercial uh, archaeology and academia, can actually use these technologies and these platforms to engage uh, non-specialist audiences and um, generating measurable, so non-rhetoric, um, benefits that are not only of a cultural kind but also potentially social and economic and that cannot benefit only audiences but also the institutions that do promote um, these programs of engagement. So we um, organized uh, a first workshop in 2011 uh, which was published um, in April this year under the title of Archaeology and Digital Communication towards strategies uh, of public engagement uh, in Beijing, also the conference that we're holding today. We're holding, we're holding today. Um, and then this year, uh, a workshop which was instead organized by Lorna Richardson, looking specifically at barriers of uh, barriers uh, to uh, participation in archaeology online. And these events uh, were um, very much aimed at an internal audience, though they had uh, quite good attendance also from outside. And what we hope uh, to do um, with this conference is to uh, go uh, in further depth and to widen the discussion that we've been carrying out. So um, we will have a first session looking at theory behind digital engagement and methods uh, to evaluate digital engagement. And then three sessions looking at instead at specific case studies that have demonstrated um, how successful they were uh, in engaging the specialist audiences and uh, producing real and measured outcomes, positive outcomes. Uh, so now I would like to leave um, the floor to Dan, uh, but not before thanking, and I'll be doing this several times because they've been so uh, amazing, our conference team. Um, so uh, Anna Paterlini, uh, Juan Montgomery, Richard Lewis, um, and uh, Eduardo Escalante, who have been helping, and our personal friends Alessio uh, Palmisano and Cristina Bona, who have, who have been amazing. Sorry. Uh, so the other conference organizer, Dennett. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Chiara. We actually thank Chiara as well for the driving force as the organizer of this conference, which is quite modest and won't fit to that. But thank you very much for coming today. So the day before Lucan disappeared, it's actually in the room at the moment, perhaps over there. Um, it's also a day when there's lots of other conferences going on, so it's very nice that you've actually taken the time to come down for this conference. Um, there's a few things that I think we need to remember today. Uh, we've got a reception at 5 o'clock, which we hope lots of you have come to. Chiara's very keen on the wine this evening, I think it's a Chianti <laughs> so, so if you can come and join us for that, we would be very welcome. I imagine afterwards we might go to the Brie Louise pub or another one that sells real ale, so Don will be very happy. Uh, we've got tea break, we've got a uh, lunch break. Um, what we will ask the speakers to do is try and keep to 15 minutes exactly. We're trying to keep to a schedule. Um, if you go over, we might turn the microphone off if you can. <laughs> um, so, I think Kiara said most of the things that I was going to say about the structure of the day, which is fine by me, because you probably don't want to listen to me till this afternoon. So, there's not really much else to say apart from the fire exits in the back, the toilets are downstairs in the, in the foyer. Um, there's a wireless network, so if you've got edgy road, you might find that works better than the UCL network, so try and use that instead. And we've also got one slight change to the programme. Um, in the afternoon session, we've got Brad Hafford from uh, Penn Muni Museum. He's at the back and he's going to talk about the early digitisation project and crowdsourcing. Um, so I hope you'll forgive us for not writing that down in the programme. I think that's all I need to say, isn't it, Kiara? So let's give the floor back to Bob. Right. Oh, one last thing. You've got mobile.